Wow! Just when you thought that Jeff Bezos cannot get an even more sore loser than he actually was, now this news broke ground on Twitter just recently. And talking about sore losers, Bezos can shake hands with Dimitri Rogozin of Roscosmos because of a new story that is even more insane. So let's discuss what Bezos and Rogozin did, which will certainly make them dislike even more than they already are. Uh, Jeff, 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 why, hmm? Why can't you just accept that you have lost the competition and that someone else has won? We are of course talking about the already now infamous moon lander contract for NASA's Artemis program that aims to return astronauts to the moon in this decade. NASA decided to award this human landing system, short HLS, contract to SpaceX with their Lunar Lander Starship for $2.9 billion. Blue Origin and Dynetics lost. Jeff didn't take that so well and he filed a protest with the Government Accountability Office GAO. But the GAO found that NASA's decision to award the contract only to SpaceX was an absolutely fair decision. In fact, new details emerged just recently in an article published by TechCrunch where they analyzed the GAO's decision in detail. And in short, SpaceX didn't only win the contract because they had the cheapest price, but no, they also won in other areas. So let's have a quick look. NASA weighed the decision on a technical and managerial level. That means the technical approach and the management level decisions. And SpaceX beats both Blue Origin and Dynetics as we can see in this official NASA table here, with SpaceX ranking acceptable and outstanding, while Blue Origin scores acceptable and very good, respectively. Dynetics is even worse with marginal and very good, respectively. And that doesn't take into account the bidding prices, which you can now see here in full glorious detail. In even more detail, SpaceX received the following rankings. Technical, 3 significant strengths, 10 strengths, 6 weaknesses and 1 significant weakness. Management, 2 significant strengths, 3 strengths and 2 weaknesses, while Team Blue scored the following. Technical, 13 strengths, 14 weaknesses and 2 significant weaknesses. Management, 1 significant strength, 2 strengths and 6 weaknesses. So side by side this means that SpaceX has on the technical side three more significant strengths than Blue Origin, three less strengths, eight less weaknesses and one less significant weakness. On the management side, SpaceX also wins with one more significant strength, one more strength and four less weaknesses. This means that even totally disregarding the much cheaper price of SpaceX versus Blue Origin and Dynetics, SpaceX might still have won just because of their higher technical and managerial ranking. That, among other reasons, is why the GAO found that Blue Origins and Dynetics protests were invalid and that NASA made the right call in deciding for the SpaceX moonlander. Ok, so now you would think that after this decision, Jeff would have learned his lesson. You know, if you lose not only once but twice, you learn your lesson and try something new or learn from your mistakes. But not Jeff, no. Jeff Bezos apparently just doesn't give up and really, really wants to harass SpaceX as much as possible. And then people wonder why Blue Origin and Jeff Bezos are so disliked. Well, no one would dislike Blue Origin if not for their unfair business practices. Kind of like, if we can't win fair and square, then we have to employ some dirty tactics. Remember when in 2015 Blue Origin had the audacity to want to patent sea landings with rockets in order to hinder SpaceX of performing sea landings? Blue Origin basically descended to the level of a patent troll back then. Of course Blue Origin didn't invent sea landings on barges. But Jeff just wanted to throw some stones into SpaceX's direction, just to hinder SpaceX's progress. Of course, they didn't succeed with this plan. 
or when Bezos tried to hinder the deployment of Starlink satellites to lower orbits by protesting with the FCC. Of course, Jeff wants his own Kuiper constellation consisting of 3,200 satellites. But contrary to SpaceX, however, that has already more than 1,000 of its Starlink satellites successfully deployed in orbit, Blue Origin is again all talk and no action, since those funny fellas don't even have a rocket capable of sending even one Kuiper satellite into orbit. Or remember when Jeff Bezos made fun of colonizing Mars but said that instead living on O'Neill cylinders will be so much better? Oh cool! You will build the colonies, right Jeff? You with Blue Origin that isn't even capable of delivering the BE-4 engines in time to ULA for the Vulcan Centaur? You the company that is incapable of building an orbital rocket? You want to build gigantic O'Neill cylinders? When, hmm? In the year 5000? Building O'Neill cylinders is such a ridiculously hard and crazy technical challenge that it will be at least a hundred years until we can even remotely think of building one. By then, we will already have thriving cities on Mars and on the Moon and they will most likely not be built by Blue Origin, we dare say. Let's be realistic, he cannot win on a technical level. He just doesn't have Elon's technical expertise. Of course he's also intelligent, but he's not a physicist and engineer like Elon. So now basically after trying to hinder SpaceX wherever he can, Jeff still isn't finished. So now the news broke ground on Twitter that after the GAO decision, Blue Origin wants to still continue to fight for the HLS contract by possibly taking it to the Court of Federal Claims. Also, they want to persuade, persuade in quotation marks, so they want to persuade NASA to accept the $2 billion bribe, I mean, sorry, the $2 billion cash injection in order to accept their lander. We wonder why Jeff would only inject $2 billion. Why doesn't he suggest to pay the entire $6 billion for the lander? Why only two? If he's so generous, why not reach deeper into his almost $200 billion worth of pockets? Six billion for the entire lander would only be 3% of his net worth, right? And we know that by contrast, Elon is pouring a lot more of his net worth into the Starship and Super Heavy program. So if Jeff really wants the contract so badly, why not pay for it in its entirety? Why only two billion? Seems a bit parsimonious to us. Of course, Jeff lives in a $165 million luxury mansion, while Elon lives in a $50,000 tiny house at Boca Chica. This is a quite remarkable character difference between Elon and Jeff. And we're not saying that Elon is free from faults. Far from it. We're not the typical fanboys that defend everything Elon's doing. Because Elon can be a real ass sometimes, that is 100% clear. But come on, everyone can see that there is a fundamental difference both in character and in technical ability between Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. The one would pay his last penny in order to make humanity a multi-planetary civilization, while the other apparently has other priorities like for example huge mansions and really doesn't want to pour in too much of his own money for his space venture. So yes, Jeff Bezos really knows how to appear like an even more sore loser. We thought it was impossible, but apparently he can really do it. Amazing Jeff. He can shake hands with Dimitri Rogozin. Like Bezos, when things go wrong, he likes to blame others for his own shortcomings. This quite insane story here goes back to an incident on the International Space Station in 2018 where a small hole in the Soyuz MS-09 vehicle that was docked to the ISS had been discovered back then just in time because if it hadn't, it would have depressurized the ISS in about two weeks. The crew aboard the ISS was able to patch the hole with epoxy and everything was good again. The spacecraft was safe enough to fly crew back to Earth again. Now the question arose of course how this hole had been caused. 
a micrometeorite impact had been ruled out and Russian media reported that it was very likely caused by a manufacturing or testing error while it was still on Earth. But now a new version of the story was released by Russian news agency TASS where a high-ranking official in the Russian space industry was interviewed about the incident and he blamed a NASA astronaut for the incident. This NASA astronaut supposedly had a mental breakdown in space and drilled a hole into the Soyuz capsule on purpose in order to force a return to Earth with the Soyuz capsule prematurely. Wow! I mean, these are new lows even for this so-called high-ranking member, which is very likely none other than Rhodesin himself. Yeah, the guy who repeatedly attacked SpaceX and Elon. So basically most likely a Russian technician damaged the spacecraft back on Earth and instead of admitting the own flaws, Rhodesin blames a NASA astronaut that went supposedly berserk in space and wanted to depressurize the ISS on purpose. Bezos can shake hands with Robertson. The one is a sore loser that wants to win by employing unfair methods of protests, bribery and lobbying, while the other has problems of admitting own mistakes and likes to instead blame others. Probably it's very good for the future if NASA would decide to completely end the partnership with Russia for the Artemis program. Rogozin deemed the Artemis program too US-centric anyways and now has signed a memorandum of understanding with China for their international moon base. We talked about it in this video here. It will be extremely international, consisting of Russia and China. And that's it. All other nations will already be on the SpaceX-built Artemis moon base by the time the first Chinese Taikonaut even lands on the moon, let alone by the time China and Russia will have built a moon base. It's sad to see this kind of behavior by Rogozin and Bezos, honestly. If you lose, then try to improve yourself, you know, analyze your mistakes, improve and therefore later you might be able to win. The same is true for all areas of life. Oh man, anyways, before I descend into an uncontrolled rant again, because such childish behavior really annoys the hell out of me, I would say enough for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Jishuan and me wish you a nice day. All the best and on to the future.